In this video, we're going to show a federated learning demo uh, using Nevermind. Uh, you can check our uh, GitHub repo. We have several demos there. Uh, and in this particular one, we're going to be uh, using a credit card fraud detection uh, demo uh, using the data set from, from Kaggle. Uh, and we're going to be using doing this using a uh, Jupyter uh, notebooks uh, so uh, here we're gonna showcase both the uh, flow for the data providers and the flow for the data consumers that want to run some mas machine learning job on top of the data from the data providers and uh, Never mind it allow us to do this using the data in situ compute uh, capabilities. Uh, and this is basically, uh, basically uh, supports uh, any kind of compute services over the data from a data provider. Uh, and this compute is executed on the infrastructure of the data provider so that the data doesn't have to move. Uh, for this particular demo, uh, we're gonna have the the entire Nevermind stack, which uh, uh, contains the blockchain, so a metadata API, where um, the metadata about the, the the data assets are stored. We're gonna have two data providers, um, uh, each one of them providing a data set for the credit card fraud demo. And we will have a third provider which uh, doesn't provide any data, it just provides a service. And this is the federated learning uh, framework, which will take care of orchestrating the federated learning session and also aggregating the results from the individual participants. Um, and then we will have a data scientist that's, that is gonna discover the data from the data providers, is gonna pay for compute access to the data, and then it's gonna execute the machine learning code over the data. So we can start with a, with a provider. So this is something that each data provider would need to do uh, for their data. And uh, in Nevermind, when you wanna advertise some data set, you need to provide some metadata. Uh, and what we're showing here are just uh, required fields but the this this metadata can contain any attributes so in this case we just have a name an author the price uh the, and the the pointer to the data set itself and in the end we uh, advertise we create this asset on never minded by using the create compute because we're saying that we don't want to allow data consumers to actually download or access this data we just want to allow them to run computations over the data so we can run this notebook and here we're gonna see for each data provider we have a an ID for the this the, the data set and this is for the second provider and this is for the third provider that's just providing the federated learning framework so it has no files okay so now as a consumer through some marketplace I discover these IDs I'm gonna copy them to the consumer notebook the second data set and then we need the third one which is the federated learning service and I'm gonna execute this notebook while we go through it okay so the first thing to do is you know, setting up an account and get some uh, never minded tokens uh, and then what we need to do is publish the algorithm which is actually the the, the code that's going to perform the the machine learning uh, 
job. Uh, and in this case, we have uh, we are sending the code as a as a file. Uh, and here we're going to use the actual uh, Jupyter notebook. We're going to go over it uh, afterwards. We're saying that this asset is of the type algorithm, and we have some other uh, uh, attributes of this algorithm. We're saying it's uh, Python, uh, and then in the entry point we define how the algorithm should be executed. So we start by installing some uh, dependencies and then we're using paper mill to uh, execute the actual uh, uh, Jupyter notebook. And then we have the requirements for the execution environment. In our case, we're just using a stock Python uh, Docker image. So then we create this asset on Neverminded and we get an ID for our algorithm and afterwards what we gotta do is to create a workflow. So a workflow is similar to you know, how we define uh, jobs on, for instance, uh, GitHub Actions or uh, Circle CI. So we have several stages and each stage has uh, one input or multiple and an algorithm that we actually want to execute. Uh, and this can be extended to multiple stages where each uh, Consequent stage uses the output of the previous stage. Uh, in our case, we're only going to be using uh, one stage, and we get as an input the one data set, and we execute the algorithm. And this is run on one of the data providers. Uh, for the second workflow, is the same for the second data set. And the third workflow is just for the uh, provider using uh, providing the federated learning cap capabilities. So here basically we have no inputs and we're just uh, kind of defining what service we want to use. In this case is the Zaynet federated learning framework. Uh, and once we have that, we can create the workflows and we get the IDs of the workflows that we're creating on Nevermind. Uh, the next step is to actually order the assets so it means that we need to lock payment for uh, compute access to the assets and this is what we do we order both data sets and the coordinator service uh, and we get a service agreement id back basically this uh, is a pointer to uh, a document that says that uh, that the funds are locked and everything is uh, is correct and we are uh, we have permissions to execute uh, the, the compute jobs and the last step is to actually um, ask never mind to execute our compute jobs so here we have our service agreements ids that we had previously we have the assets we want to use we have the service in this case is uh, computing uh, and then we have the workflows. So we do this for each workflow and we get back an execution ID. Uh, and then we can just monitor the jobs. So uh, through the Nevermind SDK, we can check the status or we can, sh we can get the logs back uh, and uh, we, can we can just mo monitor the jobs until they are finished and they can take arbitrarily uh, amounts of time uh, depending on, on the, the job itself. Uh, and from the, the provider infrastructure, this is part of the compute stack and here we can see that the jobs are running. So three jobs, one for each workflow. So this is the, the coordinator uh, service. So we have a coordinator and an aggregator. Um, if we go back and then we have the two participants there are training over the data set. So now we can go over the, the actual uh, algorithm. Uh, so this is a pretty standard, uh, uh, just a machine learning uh, model. So we start by reading the input files, which are uh, provided by the data provider. Uh, and we start by splitting the data uh, and then this is th this participant uh, is part of the Zane SDK uh, federated learning framework 
uh, and here basically what we need uh, we can you know initialize how we want and what we actually need to define is override this train around method uh, to say how we actually want to train and uh, this takes as, a, as an input the, the weights of the global model that are uh, uh, sent to us by the, the aggregator at the end of each round so we set these weights into our own model then we select some subset of the data to train and then we start the training uh, and in the end we can uh, run some uh, some metrics over the the train model and this is repeated over each round and in our case we have everything pre-configured to run 10 rounds uh, yeah and this is this is uh, the actual uh, machine learning algorithm that is sent to the data providers so now if we go back to our jobs we can see that all the three jobs succeeded and each one of them created an output which we then just download uh, when a data provider creates an output from from a job it transfers ownership to the data consumer that actually ordered the job so we're able to download it uh, and we can see that here we created it created three folders with each one of the downloads and we can inspect them so for the two participants what we actually got back uh, was the the same notebook but after the execution so we should have some output in the cells well, we have some warnings but uh, here we can see we have the accuracy at the end of each round um, so for the 10 rounds uh, the second notebook is the same for the second participants and the third one is from the coordinator and here basically we have the global model uh, at the end of each round so here is the the, the final model after the 10 rounds and now we can uh, use this model to uh, add it to our service so we can start you know, do predictions uh, and that's it that's uh, a demo of how to run federated learning on nevermind it